face-to-face -face. and today I'm uh, with David. We're going to talk about uh, writing, e-books, hiking. Uh, welcome to welcome to face-to-face, -to -face, David. Thank so you. So you, uh, you bring it here, two books. Mm -hmm. One, one is about um, this hiking ebook story. Maybe mm -hmm. you can, we mm -hmm. can start with that, and then we will go to, to the next. Sure, sounds good. So, what, what happened? So, uh, yeah. So this book, uh, Life Plus Seventy, redacted. This was just released last year in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. It's based on on real events, you know. So the so the frame story is true. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, was an ebook that I posted online for a quarter of a million dollars as a joke. Never expected anyone to, you know, really mm -hmm. look into it or to buy it at a quarter of a million dollars. It's one copy, so it was supposed to be a sort of limited edition. Well, original. It's a, right, very, it's a very limited edition. Very <laughs> limited edition. It's one copy uh -huh. of, a, of a electronic file, uh -huh. which of course is impossible, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, well, not impossible. It was one file. It was stolen though within a couple of months of its being online. It was hacked. Yeah. Uh, so one cent was sort of deposited into the uh, account that uh -huh. it was associated with. That mm -hmm. one cent somehow got the hacker to download the, the e-book. Um, then what happened next was I started a correspondence with the hacker because I thought I could approach it as a, a sort of in a vengeful way and be angry and, you know, want the money and, you know... Be arrested and put and him in jail and so on and so sure, forth. Sure, sure, come out for come out for blood, exactly. um, but instead I just thought uh, it was ridiculous to, to begin with, uh -huh. and that was the point, is, is the absurdity of it, and so mm -hmm. this is just absurdity, mm -hmm. you know, absurdity upon absurdity mm -hmm. upon absurdity, mm -hmm. so uh, I just went with that absurdity and just started a correspondence with him, or her, I don't know actually, yeah. uh, who the real hacker uh, is or was, mm -hmm. um, but some of that correspondence is in the book then, so in the printed version, then it's been reprinted, it was published by uh, Litfest Press in 2016, in this printed version, um, with a preface to the preface and a preface, which is the story of the story okay. behind the story. So okay. It's a story of a story of a uh -huh. story, a metafiction of a fiction of a metafiction. Yeah. Do you want to um, to read um, a piece of it? Yes, I can do that. Okay. I can do that. Uh, so I will read. I think I will skip the preface to the preface. It begins with uh, with a, a quote from Raymond Fetterman. I want to write a novel that cancels itself as it goes along. And then it begins, Life Plus 70, redacted, preface. This book takes on a new severely edited form of a similar manuscript which is titled simply Life Plus 70. Life Plus 70 is not a heartwarming story about the redemption of an Alabama convict serving a life sentence. This is a work about copyrights, which is what the original ebook was about. Life plus 70 years are the terms given to the author of any copyrighted work registered in the United States of America after the year 1978. Mm -hmm. Because the original retailed at $249,999.99, it was marketed as the world's most expensive literary ebook. That was the marketing. At the time of this printing, the record still stands. In addition, there was only one copy available and advertised as such. It was precisely because of this ludicrous impracticality and market unviability, that from the minute I conceived of it, I loved this project. Therefore, I was incredulous when on September 18th, 2014, the following message did haunt the inbox of my electronic mail. You've sold an item. The ebook Life Plus 70, has just been purchased. I checked the site, and indeed the ebook had been registered as sold on the British server. My heart skipped to computerized beats. How was this possible? I didn't get the check. I didn't get the check. <laughs> this item is out of stock, read the page where the book was for sale online. No more copies are being sold. My incredulous morphed even further into exaltation when I realized the ebook had been not obtained by legitimate means. A crime had been committed. A crime. I had been hacked, or rather, my ebook had been hacked by a young man or woman in London. I deduced after some internet clicking based on the email address to which the file was sent. To be hacked, it sounds so violent. The thief had left one penny as gratuity, maybe, for the quarter of a million dollar ebook, a programming trick, I assume, in which the only way the PDF file could have been downloaded was through leaving this pitiful contribution into the account. I instigated 
the first of many brief informative communiques with this clever Brit by sending a bill for the remaining $249,999.98, mm -hmm. all in jest, of course, for me. In this revamped print edition of Life Plus 70, Life Plus 70 redacted, the majority of the initial text has been blacked out. Uh, these are, there are very few reasons for this. The main is that I find it more readable than the original. The first Life Plus 70 ebook was never meant to actually be viewed, purveyed, or otherwise known at all. I never thought anyone would download it. In fact, chief among my reactions to its being stolen was one of embarrassment. I wasn't it wasn't ready to be received. I had been preparing a revised file and had not gotten around to uploading it. I had posted the ebook online as a complete joke, thinking that nobody would buy it at such a prohibitive price. It never crossed my mind that someone would go to the trouble to obtain it illegally. There was even a terms of agreement attached to the purchase of the ebook which stripped any and all rights of the purchaser. That's uh, reproduced in this book now, mm -hmm. despite the outrageous price tag. For me, Life Plus 70 was purely conceptual art, akin to a DA levy approach to copyright infringement, or else maybe a Yoko Ono instructional piece, not a book to be read carefully or even read at all, as Kenneth Golds Goldsmith might have it. I was wrong. It was nabbed within the first few weeks of its public existence. But it gets better. The email correspondence with this net-savvy hoodlum started with my sending a bill for the remaining amount, a simple missive stating that only one cent had been deposited into my redacted account, and the amount clearly stated as owed $249,999.98. Redacted, the company, allowed this transmission through the proverbial click of a button, but they were non-responsive when it came to actually collecting. Not that I was too serious about cashing in, but it was the principle of the matter. I thought the hacker deserved a bit of retribution. Mm -hmm. I did not feel guilty when, in response to one of these bills, the hacker replied, but I'm just a 17-year-old boy. I found it disingenuous, a way to disown wrongdoing. I pouted, called my mother. But later, something even more wild and incongruous this way came. He began to get critical about the text, or she, we don't really know. He had been disappointed. The book had fallen short of his expectations. He thought it was insufficiently noetic. He preferred my earlier work and rebounding with a similar line of logic that might provoke a bank robber to return to the scene of the crime and complain about the wallpaper. He wanted his money back. I thought myself enough of an absurdist to appreciate this on a few levels. Firstly, the hacker proved himself or herself to be someone who actually read the text. And I do like readers. <laughs> Writers, we need so readers. You, you, got, you got one sense and a reader. <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. Look at the bright side. Exactly. And because, like many writers, I pride myself on being inured to rejection, I have come to cherish the good ones. That is all part of how things take shape. But this rejection was unique, ballsy, illicit, and it was profoundly entertaining. True, the ebook may have been a singularly bad idea, but its first reader, in some perverted sense, was also its first critic. Said reader later apologized and claimed he deleted the one and only copy of the unauthorized material. Should I believe this? The first edition of Life Plus 70 may have been a digital mistake, but I would much rather see it in this print in this current updated form as it is between these covers. And uh, then I give thanks to uh, Jane Carmen and Litfest Press for her generosity and vision for this, uh, for this text. And, uh, and I signed it off, David Moscovich, NYC, July 2016. That's a cute story. So That's a very cute story. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's very, <laughs> it's, it's very lovely. I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. And then it, and then it, it contains the yeah, original yeah, the the ebook inside. No, no, but and then having awesome. the hacker be 17 and then yeah. having read it, it's, it's yeah. very good. Thank you. I, I don't. I still don't know what to believe. I mean, to it's, it's, yeah, it's plausible. It's, it's exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's great. Mm -hmm. It's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the other guy. Oh sure. We want to take this quick, one quick. on. Okay. Tell uh, us. Okay, quickly. Uh, this one is uh, from 2013. You okay. are make very important bath time. Uh, and uh, this one is set in Japan. Mm -hmm. The narrator uh, goes. It's not a first person, it's a second person narration. So every story is you, 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 you. So it could really be anyone. And what I like to think anyway mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. um, many people from many different backgrounds can somehow supplant themselves and relate 
to the stories mm -hmm. um, because of the narration, the, the sense, the sec in the second person narration, you can be anyone. You can be yourself or you can be someone else, mm -hmm. right? Um, but essentially the story's uh, one story per page, so it's flash fiction um, and all takes place in southern Japan in which the narrator supplants himself or herself, probably himself, uh, in situations in which he doesn't understand how to behave, behaves poorly, badly, um, and misinterprets and gets into a lot of trouble. Um, okay. And one of the critics, uh, and I think, was very adept in saying that the, the getting it's in about trouble in Japan is not good. It's not good news. Probably not. <laughs> um, right. Um, but uh, the one of the critics was adept in saying that uh, it's a it's a smart book about stupid behavior. Uh -huh. And I think that's that's very perceptive. A smart book about stupid behavior. Do you, have a, do you have a short uh, short paragraph you can read? Yes, I have a short one I can read you. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Kancho. And you might have to do some bleeping after this one, just yeah. maybe once. Okay. Okay. Kancho. You soon found, find out there are three main ways your students will try to poke their hands inside your anal cavity. And in order of both efficiency and popularity, these are, one, they put two palms together and lace every finger but index and leave thumb pointing straight upwards. They now have a gun. They will run behind you as quickly as possible. Insert index fingers. Two, they form hands as in a prayer. Insert hands into your crack. Three, they rub palms together rapidly while thrusting forward into teacher's ass. This is the closely guarded tradition of Kancho which, of course, is considered unacceptable and practiced widely. Four, they wait for you in groups outside the school building, a four-story concrete structure that might have been built as a prison, and when you come down the stairs, exhausted from the attempts at Kancho, they put their palms together and show their index finger guns, then say, just kidding, teacher. Japanese joke, Dayo. And it has a, a short continuation, if you think we have time. Good. Cup of illumination. You are strapping a ceramic saucer over your butt cheeks. You are stretching the duct tape in long, luxurious strips, letting them dangle from the low-set table in your room. The entire operation takes only a few minutes. Now the tape has secured the ceramic to cover your behind. You are ready to teach now. The other commuters on the train notice your walking is visibly obtuse, as if your left leg were shorter than the right. For you, this is a victory walk. You try to control your gait, but you enter the classroom like a war veteran who lost his cane. You notice a click of students gossiping by the shoe lockers. They're saying that you must have been hit hard by the cancho. You can't even walk. You begin to arrange your papers on the desk. The adolescents file in. The bell rings, and you begin to write instructions on the whiteboard, conscious that your back is toward them. And on a normal day, you would, before writing on the whiteboard turn around and quickly shoo away any of the peevish little monsters pointing their fingers ready to stick them into your buttocks. But not today. Today your head hums with preemptive delight as you sense the furtive steps behind you. You lean over to the far side of the whiteboard, beckoning them with your magic anal warship, allowing them the perfect angle. You can sense without looking there are three or four of them in a line. You're in the middle of writing present progress when the marker drags across the board. The student clumps his fingers against the impenetrable armaments in your pants. The others step back in horror. The laughter gives way to howling, curses, crying and sobbing. The battle is won. You simply pick up writing where you left off. The sweet, syrupy revenge is won. The students return to their seats, horrified. The victim grasping his damaged hands, collapsing onto the desk from pain. The others in awe as if struck for the first time by justice and practice. The assistant Japanese teacher walks into the room and surveys the carnage. She picks up the crying student by the hair and asks him, what happened? The student, through his tears, exclaims, that American butt is so hard, to which the assistant replies, what were you doing sticking your hands where they don't belong? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Uh, that was the show face to face. And uh, keep watching your, your news on presenza.com. And uh, hope to, um, to see you soon. Thank you very much.